Psychotherapy is such a personal and private process that it is a mystery to most people who have never gone through it. The following series is a unique effort that allows us to sit in on what is ordinarily a very private therapeutic experience. An actual patient was courageous enough and considerate enough to allow herself to be photographed while actually engaged in therapy with three different therapists. Thus, we are allowed the privilege of seeing and feeling what really transpires. A film series like this, in which three therapists, distinguished by their different orientations, share their therapeutic endeavors, has never been made before. We therefore wish to express our gratitude to Gloria, the patient, and to her therapist, for allowing us to share in their therapeutic adventure. This series will be divided into three separate films. In the first film, we see Dr. Carl Rogers, founder of Client-Centered Therapy, interviewing Gloria. In film number two, Dr. Frederick Pearls, founder of Gestalt Therapy, is working with her. And in film number three, Dr. Albert Ellis, founder of Rational Emotive Therapy, is our therapist. Each therapist will first describe his system of therapy briefly. He will then demonstrate his work with Gloria, and then he will comment briefly on his work. Now, here is Dr. Carl Rogers. From my own years of therapeutic experience, I've come to feel that if I can create the proper climate, the proper relationship, the proper conditions, a process of therapeutic movement will almost inevitably occur in my client. You might ask, what is this climate? What, what are these conditions? Uh, will they exist in the interview with the woman I'm about to talk with whom I've never seen before? Let me try to describe very briefly what these conditions are as I see them. First of all, one question is, can I be real in the relationship? This uh, has come to have an increasing amount of importance to me over the years. I feel that um, genuineness is another way of describing the quality I would like to have. Uh, I like the term congruence, by which I mean that what I'm experiencing inside is present in my awareness and comes out through my communication. In a sense, when I have this quality, I'm, I'm all in one piece in the relationship. Um, there's another word that describes it for me. I feel that in the relationship, I would like to have a transparency. I would be quite willing for my client to see all the way through me, that there would be nothing, nothing hidden. And when I'm real in this fashion that I'm trying to describe, then I know that uh, my own feelings will, will often bubble up into awareness and be expressed, but be expressed in ways that won't impose themselves uh, on my client. Then the second question I would have is, will I find myself praising this person? 
uh, caring for this person. I certainly don't want to pretend a caring that I don't feel. In fact, if I dislike my client persistently, I feel it's better that I should express it. But I know that the process of therapy is much more likely to occur and constructive change is much more likely if I feel a real spontaneous prizing uh, of this individual with whom I'm working. A prizing of this person as a separate individual. Uh, you can call that quality acceptance, you can call it caring, uh, you can call it a non-possessive love if you wish. I think any of those terms tend to describe it. I know that the relationship will prove more constructive if it's present. Then the third quality, will I be able to understand the inner world of this uh, individual from the, from the inside? Can I, will I be able to see it through her eyes? Will I be able to uh, be sufficiently sensitive to move around inside the world of her feelings so that I know what it feels like to be her, so that I can sense not only the surface meanings but some of the meanings that lie somewhat uh, underneath the surface. I know that if I can let myself uh, sensitively and accurately enter into her world of experience, then change and therapeutic movement are much more likely. Well, suppose I am fortunate and that I do experience some of these attitudes in the relationship, what then? Well, then a variety of things are likely to happen, both from my clinical experience and from our research investigations. We find that if uh, attitudes of the sort that I've described are present, then quite a number of things will happen. She'll explore some of her feelings and attitudes more deeply. She's likely to discover some hidden aspects of herself that she wasn't aware of previously. Feeling herself prized by me, it's quite possible she'll come to prize herself more. Feeling that some of her meanings are understood by me, then she can more readily perhaps listen to herself, listen to what's going on within her own experience, listen to some of the meanings she hasn't been able to catch before. And perhaps if she senses a realness in me, uh, she'll be able to be a little more real within herself. I suspect there will be a change in the manner of her expression. At least this has been my experience in other instances. From being rather remote from her experiencing, remote from what's going on within her, uh, it's possible that she'll move toward more immediacy of experiencing. That uh, she will be able to sense and express what's going on in her in the immediate moment. From being disapproving of herself, it's quite possible she will move toward uh, a greater degree of acceptance of herself. From somewhat of a fear of relating, she may move toward being able to relate more directly and to encounter me more directly. From construing life in somewhat uh, rigid black and white patterns, uh, she may move toward more tentative ways of uh, construing her experience and of seeing the meanings in it. From uh, a locus of evaluation which is outside of herself, it's quite possible she will move toward recognizing a greater capacity within herself for making judgments and, and drawing conclusions. So those are the some of those are some of the changes that we. Have. If I have any success in creating the kind of conditions that I described initially, then we may be able to see uh, some of these changes in this client, even though I know in advance that our contact is going to be very brief. Good morning. Hello, I'm, I'm Dr. Dr. Rogers. You must be Gloria. Yes, I am. Let's have this chair. No, no. We have half an hour together, and I really don't know what we'll be able to make of it, but uh, I hope we can make something of it. I'd be glad to know whatever concerns you. Well, I'm 
right now I'm nervous, but mm -hmm. I feel more comfortable the way you're talking in a low voice, and I don't feel like you'll be so harsh on me. But, uh... I, I hear the tremor in your voice, so <laughs> I'm there and he's... Uh, well, the main thing I uh, want to talk to you about is, uh, I'm just newly divorced, and, uh, I had gone in therapy before, and I felt comfortable when I left, and all of a sudden now the biggest change is adjusting to my single life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things that bother me the most is especially men and having men to the house and how it affects the children. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the biggest thing I want, the thing that keeps coming to my mind I want to tell you about is I have a daughter nine who at one time I felt I had a lot of emotional problems. And I wish I could stop shaking. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, I'm real conscious of things affecting her. I don't want her to get upset. I don't want to shock her. I want so bad to, for her to accept me. Mm -hmm. And we're real open with each other, especially about sex. And the other day, she saw a girl that was single but pregnant. And she asked me all about, can girls get pregnant if they're single? And the conversation was fine, and I wasn't un at ease at all with her until she asked me if I'd ever made love to a man since I left her daddy. And I lied to her. And ever since that, it keeps coming up to my mind because I feel so guilty lying to her because mm -hmm. I never lie and I want her to trust me. Mm -hmm. And I want, I almost want an answer from you. I want you to tell me if it will affect her wrong if mm -hmm. I told her the truth or what. Mm -hmm. and, and it's this concern about her and the fact that you really aren't, that this open relationship that has existed between you now, you feel is kind of... Yes, I feel damaged. like I have to be on guard about that uh -huh. because I remember when I was a little girl, when I first found out my mother and father made love, it was dirty and terrible, and mm -hmm. I didn't I didn't like her anymore mm -hmm. for a while. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to lie to Pammy either, and I don't know... And you sure wish I could give you the answer as to what you should tell her. I was afraid you were going to say that. Because mm -hmm. what you really want is an answer. I want to especially know if it would affect her, if I was completely honest and open with her, or if it would affect her because I lied. I feel like it's bound to make a strain because I lied to her. Mm -hmm. Because she'll suspect that or she will know something's not quite I right. I feel really inside she'll distrust me, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also I thought, well, gee, what about when she gets a little older and she finds herself in touchy situations? She probably wouldn't want to admit it to me because she thinks I'm so good and so mm -hmm. sweet. Mm -hmm. And yet I'm afraid she could think mm -hmm. I'm really a, mm -hmm. a devil. Mm -hmm. And I want so bad for her to accept me. And I don't know how much a nine-year-old can take. And really both alternatives concern you, but she might think you're too good or better than you really are. Yes. And she might think that you're worse than you are. Not worse than I am. I don't know if she can accept me the way I am. I think I paint a picture that I'm all sweet and motherly, mm -hmm. and I'm a little ashamed of my shady side, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I see. It really cuts a little deeper. If she really knew you, would she, could she accept you? This is what I don't know, yes. I don't want her to turn away from me. That and I don't even know how I feel about it because there are times when I feel so guilty, like when I have a man over. I even try to make a special setup so that if I were ever alone with him, the children would never catch me and that sort of thing. Because mm -hmm. I'm real leery about it. Mm -hmm. And yet I also know I have these desires. So it's quite clear. It isn't only her problem or the relationship with her. It's in you as well. And my guilt. Yeah, uh, yeah I feel guilty what, so what often. What can I accept myself as doing? And, yes, uh, yes. And you realize that you set up sort of subterfuges so as to make sure that that you're not caught or something. You realize that you are acting from guilt, is it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't like the way... I would like to feel comfortable with whatever I do. If I choose not to tell Pammy the truth, to feel comfortable that she can't mm -hmm. handle it, and mm -hmm. I don't. Mm -hmm. I want to be honest, mm -hmm. and yet I feel there are some areas that I don't even accept. Mm -hmm. And if you can't accept them in yourself, how could you possibly be comfortable in telling them to her? Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yet, as you say, you do have these desires and you do have your feelings, but but you don't feel good about them. Right. And I, I, I have a feeling you're just going to sit there and let me stew on it, and I, I want more... Uh, I want you to help me get rid of my guilt feeling. If I can get rid of my guilt feeling about lying or going to bed with a single man, any of that, just so I can feel more comfortable. Mm -hmm. And I guess I'd like to say, no, I don't want to let you just stew in your feelings. But on the other hand, I, I also feel that this is the kind of very private thing that I couldn't possibly answer for you. 
but I as sure as anything will try to help you work toward your own answer. I don't know whether that makes any sense to you, but I mean it. Well, I appreciate you saying that. You sound like you mean it. But I don't know where to go. Mm -hmm. I don't begin mm -hmm. to know where to go. I mm -hmm. thought that I'd pretty well worked over most of my guilt. And mm -hmm. now that this is coming up, I'm disappointed in myself. Mm -hmm. I really am. Mm -hmm. I want, I like it when I feel that no matter what I do, even if it's against my own morals or my upbringing, that I can still feel good about me. And now I don't. Like, uh, there's a girl at work who sort of mothers me. And she just, she, I think she thinks I'm all sweet. And I sure don't want to show my more ornery, devilish side mm -hmm. with her. I want to be sweet. And it's so hard for me to, this all seems so new again. And mm -hmm. it's so disappointing. Yeah, I get the disappointment that here, a lot of these things you thought you'd worked through, and now the guilt and the feeling that only a part of you is acceptable to anybody else. Yes. That keeps coming out. I guess I, I do catch the real deep puzzlement that you feel as to what the hell shall I do, what can I do? Yes, and you know what I can find, Doctor, is that everything I start to do that I impulse, it seems natural to tell Pam here or to go out on a date or something, I'm comfortable until I think how I was affected as a child. And the minute that comes up, then I'm all haywire. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I want to be a good mother so bad, and I feel like I am a good mother. Mm -hmm. But then there's those little exceptions, mm -hmm. like my guilt's with working. I want to work, and it's so fun having extra money. I like to work nights. The minute I think I'm not being real good to the children or giving them enough time, then I start feeling guilty again. Then that's when I'm, it's a, what do they call it, a double bind. That's just what it feels like. Mm -hmm. I want to do this, and it feels right, but after all, I'm not being a good mother, and I want to be both. Mm -hmm. I'm becoming more and more aware of what a perfectionist I am. That's what it seems like I want to be so perfect. Either I want to become perfect in my standards or not have that need anymore. Or I guess I hear it a little differently, that uh, what you want is to seem perfect. That it means it's a, a great matter of great importance to you to be a good mother, and you want to seem to be a good mother even if some of your actual feelings differ from that. Does that catch you Yeah, I don't enough? feel like I'm saying that. No, oh, that isn't okay. what I feel, really. Okay. I want to approve of me always, but my actions won't let me. I want to approve of me. I, think I realize you, all right, but let me, because I'd like to understand that. You sound as though your actions are kind of outside of you. You want to approve of you, but what you do somehow won't let you approve of yourself. Right. Like I feel that I can approve of myself regarding, for example, my sex life. This uh -huh. is the big thing. Uh -huh. If I really fell in love with a man and I respected him and I adored him, I don't think I'd feel so guilty mm -hmm. going to bed with him and I don't think I'd have to make up any excuses to the children because mm -hmm. they could see my natural caring for him. Mm -hmm. okay. But when I have the physical desire and I'll say, oh, well, why not? Mm -hmm. And I want to anyway, then I feel guilty afterwards. I hate facing the kids. I don't like looking at myself and I rarely enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And this is what I mean. If the circumstances would be different, I don't think I'd feel so guilty okay. because I'd feel right about it. Yeah, I, I guess... I hear you saying, if if what I was doing when I went to bed with a man was really genuine and full of love and respect and so on, I wouldn't feel guilty in relation to Pam. I wouldn't. Uh, I, I really would be comfortable about the situation. That's how I feel. Yes, and I know that sounds like I want a perfect situation, but that is how I feel. And in the meantime, I can't stop these desires. I've tried that also. I've tried saying, okay, I don't like myself when I do that, so I won't do it anymore. But then I resent the children. I think, why should they stop me from doing what I want? And it's really not that bad. But I guess I heard you saying, too, that it isn't only the children, that you don't like it as well when it, right. when it really isn't I'm right. sure that's, I know mm -hmm. that's it, probably even more so than I'm aware of. But I only notice it so much when I pick it up in the children. Mm -hmm. Then I can also notice mm -hmm. it in myself. Mm -hmm. Somehow, sometimes you kind of uh, feel like blaming them for the feelings you have. I mean, why should they cut you off from a normal sex life? Well, a sex life, I could say, not normal, because there mm -hmm. is something about me that says that's not mm -hmm. very healthy mm -hmm. to uh, mm -hmm. just go into sex because you feel physically attractive or something, mm -hmm. or a physical need. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. something about it tells me that's not quite right anyway. Mm -hmm. 
that you feel really that at times you are acting in ways that are not in accord with your own inner standards. Right, right. Mm -hmm. But then you were also saying a minute ago that you feel you can't help that uh, either. I wished I could. That's it. And I can't. Now I feel like uh, I can't control myself as well as I could have before for a specific reason. Now I can't. I just let go and I have... There's too many things I do wrong that I have to feel guilty for and I sure don't like that. I want you very much to give me a direct answer and I'm going to ask it and I don't expect a direct answer but I want to know do you feel that to me the most important thing is to be open and honest and if I can be open and honest with my children do you feel that it could harm them if for example I could say to Pammy I was I felt bad lying to you Pammy and I want to tell you the truth now and if I tell her the truth and she's shocked at me and she's upset that that could bother her more I, was, I want to get rid of my guilt, so that'll help me, but I don't want to put them on her. That's right. Yeah. Do you feel that, that could hurt her? Concern. I guess, uh, I'm sure this will sound evasive to you, but it seems to me that perhaps the person you're not being uh, fully honest with is you. So. Because I was very much struck by the fact that you were saying, if I feel all right about what I've done, Mm -hmm. whether it's going to bed with a man or what, if I really feel all right about it, then I don't have any concern about what I would tell Pam or, or my relationship with her. Right. All right. Now, I hear what you're saying. Then, all right, then I want to work tough. on... I want to work on accepting me, then. I want to work on feeling all right about it. Now that makes sense, that that'll come natural and then I won't have to worry about Pammy. Mm -hmm. But when things do seem so wrong for me and I have an impulse to do them, how can I accept that? What you'd like to do is to feel more accepting towards yourself when you do things that you feel are wrong. Is that right? Right. And I feel like you're going to say, now why do you think they're wrong? And uh, I have mixed feelings there too. Mm -hmm. Through therapy I'll say, now look, I know this is natural. Women feel it. Sure, we don't talk about it a lot socially. But all women feel it and it's very natural. I've had sex for the last 11 years. I'm of course going to want it. But I still think it's wrong unless you're really truly in love with a man. And my body doesn't seem to agree. And so I don't know how to accept it. Sounds like a triangle to me, doesn't it? You feel that I, or therapists in general, or other people say, it's all right, it's all right, it's natural enough, go mm -hmm. ahead. Um, and I guess you feel your body sort of lines up on that side of the picture. But something in you says, but I don't like it that way, not unless it's really right. I have a hopeless feeling. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are all the things I sort of feel myself, and I feel, uh, okay, now what? Mm -hmm. I feel that. This is the conflict, and it's just insoluble, and therefore it's hopeless. And here you look to me, and I don't seem to give you any help. And, uh, right. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I really know you can't answer for me, and I have to figure it out myself, but I want you to guide me or show me where to start or so it won't look so hopeless. I know I can keep living with this conflict, and I know eventually things would work out, but I like feeling more comfortable with the way I live. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm not. Anything I might ask, what is it you wish I would say to you? I wish you would say to me to be honest and take the risk that Pammy's going to accept me. And I also have a feeling if I could really risk it with Pammy, of all people, that I'd be able to see, here's this little kid that can accept me. And I'm really not that bad. If she really knows what a demon I am and still loves me and accepts me, it seems like it would help me to accept me more. Like, it's really not that bad. I want you to say, to go ahead and be honest. But I don't want the responsibility that it would upset her. That's right. I don't want to take responsibility so you know, for it. Yeah. 
you know very well what you'd like to do in a relationship. You would like to be yourself and you'd like to have her know that you're not perfect and you do things that maybe even she wouldn't approve of and that you disapprove of to some degree yourself. But that uh, somehow she would love you and accept you as an imperfect person. Yes. Like I wonder if my mother had been more open with me, maybe I wouldn't have had such a narrow attitude about sex. If I would have thought that she could be, you know, pretty sexy and ornery and devilish too, but I wouldn't look at her as being such a sweet mother, that she could also be the other side. But she didn't talk about that. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's where I got my picture. I don't know. But I want Pammy to see me as a full woman, mm -hmm. but also accept me. Mm -hmm. You don't sound so uncertain. I don't? What do you mean? What I mean is, you've been sitting there telling me just what you would like to do in that relationship with Pam. I would, but I don't want to quite take the risk of doing no, it unless an authority I tells me that... It's... I guess one thing that uh, I feel very keenly is, it's an awfully risky thing to live. taking a chance on your relationship with her, you'd be taking a chance on letting her know who you are, really. Yeah, but then if I don't take the chance, if I feel loved and accepted by her, I'm never going to feel good about it anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If, if her love and acceptance of you is based on a false picture of you, what the hell is the good of that? Is that, is that what yes, you're saying? Yes, that's what I mean, yes. Mm -hmm. But I also feel there's a lot of responsibility with being a mother. With I don't I don't want to feel like I've caused any big traumas in the children. Mm -hmm. I don't like all that responsibility. I think that's it. I don't like it feeling it could be my fault. Mm -hmm. I guess that's what I meant when I said life is risky. It's uh, to take the responsibility for being the person you would like to be with her is a hell of a responsibility. It is. A very frightening one. And you know, I, I look at it two ways. I like to see myself as being so honest with the kids and really being proud of myself, though, that no matter what I told them or no matter how bad they might think I was, I was honest. Mm -hmm. And down deep, it's going to be a much more wholesome relationship. Mm -hmm. And yet, you know, I get jealous of, like, when they're with their daddy. I feel he's more flip, he's not quite as real, he's not quite as honest, but nevertheless, they see a sweet picture of their dad. You know, he's all goodness and light. And I'm envious of that, too. Mm -hmm. I want them to see me just as sweet as they see him, and yet I, I know he's not quite as real with mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. So it seems like I've got to swap the one for the other. Mm -hmm. And I know this is really what I want the most, but uh, I miss some of that glory. Yeah. You sort of feel... I want them to have just as nice a picture of me as they, they have do. of their dad, and right. if his is a little phony, then maybe mine will have to be too. I think that's putting it a little too strong, I think. But that's close. That is mm -hmm. what I mean. Mm -hmm. So, uh, well, I know she can't have that neat a picture of me if I were honest. <laughs> Besides that, I do feel I'm a little more ornery than their dad anyway, so mm -hmm. I'm likely to do more mm -hmm. things that they disapprove of. Mm -hmm. Sounds like you really find it quite hard to believe that they would really love you if they knew you. That's right. You know, that's exactly it. Before therapy, I would have definitely chosen the other area. I'm going to get respect from them no matter what, even if I have to lie. I see. Well, right now, I know that's not true. Mm -hmm. And I'm not positive they'll mm -hmm. truly accept me. Mm -hmm. Something tells me they will. I know they will, but I'm not positive. I want reassurance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I keep wanting these things. Now you're in kind of a no man's land of probably shifting from one point of view toward them to another, but boy, you'd sure like somebody to say, that's right, you go yes. ahead and do it. Yes, that's why I get encouraged when I read in a book from somebody I respect and admire mm -hmm. that this is the right thing, no matter what, honesty will win out. Well, then that keeps giving me confidence by, gosh, I'm right. Mm -hmm. that it's so damn hard to really choose something on your own, isn't it? Which makes me feel very immature. I don't like this in me. I wish I were grown up enough and mature enough to make my decisions and stick by them. Mm -hmm. But I need somebody to help me on, somebody to push me. So to kind of reproach yourself for that, I guess, and feel, why, if I was anybody or if I was grown up, I'd be mature enough to decide things like this for right. myself. Right. 
and take more risks. I wish I'd take more risks. I wish that I could just go ahead and be this and say, however the children grow up, I've done my best. I didn't have to constantly have this conflict. Mm -hmm. And I'd like later years to say, no matter what you ask me, kids, at least I told you the mm -hmm. truth. You may not have liked it, but it's been the truth. Mm -hmm. That somehow I can admire. Mm -hmm. I, I just respect people that lie. I hate it. So you see what a double bind I am in. I hate myself if I'm bad, but I also hate myself if I lie. So uh, it's accepting. I want to become more accepting. And I guess... Judging from your tone of voice, you sound as though you hate yourself more when you lie than you do in terms of things you disapprove of I in do. your behavior. I do. Mm -hmm. Because this has really bothered me. This happened with Pammy about a month ago, and it keeps coming to my mind. I don't know whether to go back and talk to her about it or wait. She may have even forgotten what she asked me. But uh, it just... The point just, is, you haven't forgotten. I haven't. No. <laughs> I haven't. And I'd like to at least be able to tell her that I remember lying, and I'm mm -hmm. sorry I lied, and it's been driving me bugs because I did. I do now I feel like now that's solved and I didn't even solve the thing, but I feel relieved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I uh, I do feel like you've been saying to me, you're not giving me advice, but I feel like you're saying you really want to, you know what pattern you want to follow, Gloria, and go ahead and follow it. I sort of feel a backing up from you. I guess the way I sense it is, uh... You've been telling me that you know what you want to do, and yes, I do believe in backing up people in what they want to do. It's just a little different slant than the way it seems to you. Are you telling you me... see, one thing that concerns me is, uh, it's no damn good you're doing something that you haven't really chosen to do. That's why I'm trying to help you find out what your own inner choices are. But then there's also a conflict there because I'm not really positive what I want to do. The lying part, yes, but I'm not positive what I want to do when I go sure. against myself. Sure. Like when I bring a man to the house. I'm not sure I want to do that. If I feel guilty afterwards, I must not have really wanted to. Okay. I'm interested well, what you say. I'm not just sure which word you use, but you don't, want it, you don't like yourself or you don't approve of it when you do something against yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, this is so different. Now, this kind of thing that we're talking about now, it isn't just knowing whether you want to do something or not. If I want to go to work in the morning or I don't want to go to work, that's easy. Mm -hmm. But when I find myself doing something I don't feel comfortable with, I automatically say, if you're not comfortable, Glory, it's not right. Something's wrong. All right, now what I want to ask you is, how can I know which is the strongest? Because I do it, does that mean that's the strongest? And yet, if I disapprove, that's just part of the thing that's got to go along with it? See, it sounds like you're... I'm picking up a contradiction. I'm not, under, I'm not following. It sounds like you're feeling a contradiction in yourself, too. Although you, what I heard you saying in part is, uh, the way you like it is when you feel really comfortable about what you're doing. Yes. And I have at times when I've made a decision. Mm -hmm. Now that seems right, that seems perfectly right, no conflict. But then there are times I do things that I feel uncomfortable with, so that there is a conflict there. Mm -hmm. It's not the same at all. So what I'm saying is, how do I really know when I'm following my true feelings if I have conflicts afterwards or guilt afterwards? I see, because in the moment it may seem like your true feelings. Yes, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. if I'm starting to do it, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that really is tough. Uh, when if you feel comfortable in the moment about it, but then afterward don't feel at all comfortable, which course of action is really the one you should have followed? You know, the most outstanding thing, I don't know if you're following me when I say about this conflict, but one thing I know is I've wanted, for example, to leave my husband for quite a few years. Mm -hmm. I never did it. I kept thinking how nice it would be or how scary it would be, but I never did it. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden when I did, it felt right. I didn't feel mean toward him. I just knew this is what I had to do. That's when I know I'm following myself. I'm following my feelings completely. I had no conflict there. Some unhappy things came from it, but I still had no conflict. That, to me, is when I'm following my feelings. And in everyday life, the small little decisions, the small little things to do, don't come out that clear at all. So many conflicts come with mm -hmm. them. Yeah. Is this natural? Although you're saying, uh, I expect it is, but, but you're saying, too, that you know perfectly well the feeling within yourself that occurs when you're really doing something that's right for you. I do. 
-hmm. I do. Mm -hmm. And I miss that feeling other mm -hmm. times. And it's right away a clue to me. Mm -hmm. You can really listen to yourself sometimes and realize, no, oh, no, this isn't the right feeling. This isn't, mm -hmm. this isn't the way I would feel if I was doing what I really wanted to do. But yet many times I'll go along and do it anyway. Mm -hmm. And say, oh, well, I'm in the situation now. I'll just remember next time. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mention this word a lot in therapy, and, and most therapists grin at me or giggle or something when I say utopia. But when I do follow a feeling and I feel this good feeling inside me, that's sort of utopia. That's what mm -hmm. I mean. That's the way I like to feel, whether it's a bad thing or a good thing. But I feel right about me. Mm -hmm. This is I, what I, I want to come I sense that in those utopian moments, you really feel kind of whole. You feel all in one piece. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it uh, gives me a choked up feeling when you say that because I don't get that as often as I'd like. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I like that whole feeling. That's real precious to me. I expect none of us get it as often as we like, but I really do understand that. Mm -hmm. That really does touch you, doesn't it? Yeah, and you know what else I was just thinking? I feel dumb saying it. Uh, all of a sudden, as I'm talking, I thought, gee, how nice I can talk to you, and I want you to approve of me, and I respect you. But I miss that my father can talk to me like you are. Mm. I mean, I'd like to say, gee, yeah. I'd like you for my father. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't even know why you, that came to me. You look to me like a pretty nice daughter. But you really do miss the fact that you, you couldn't be open with your own dad. Yeah, I couldn't be open, but I, I want to blame it on him. I think I'm more open than he'd allow me. I mean, he would never uh, listen to me talk like you are. Mm -hmm. And uh, not disapprove mm -hmm. and not lower me down. It's, yeah, I thought of this the other day. Why do I always have to be so perfect? I know why. He always wanted me to be perfect. Mm -hmm. I always had to be better. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, just, I miss that. You're just trying like hell to be the girl he wants you to be. Yeah, at the same time rebelling. That's right. Like I almost gloated writing him a letter the other day and telling him I'm a waitress, which I expect him to disapprove of. I go out at nights and I, I almost gloated hitting him back like, now, how do you mm -hmm. like me? Uh -huh. And yet I rarely want acceptance and love from him. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know he loves so me. So you slap at him and say, this is what I am now, see? Yeah. But, uh, you raised me. Uh, how do you like it? Uh, but you know what I think I want him to say? I knew this was you all along, honey, and I really love you. Mm-hmm. Yes, you really feel badly, but you think there's very little chance you'll say that. No, he won't. He doesn't hear. I went uh, back home to him about two years ago, really wanting to let him know I loved him, although I've been afraid of him. Mm -hmm. He doesn't hear me. He just keeps saying things like, honey, you know I love you. You know I've always loved you, and he doesn't hear. you, and this somehow is what brings the tears inside. I don't know what it is. You know, when I talk about it, it feels more flip. If I just sit still a minute, it feels like a great big hurt down there. Mm -hmm. Did I uh, feel cheated? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, much e it's much easier to uh, be a little flip, because then you don't feel that big lump inside mm -hmm. of hurt. Mm -hmm. And, again, that's a hopeless situation. Mm -hmm. I tried working on it, and uh, I feel it's something I have to accept. My father just isn't the type of man I'd really like. I'd like somebody more understanding and caring. Mm -hmm. He cares, but not in a way that we can cooperate or communicate. Mm -hmm. yeah. I feel no, that I am permanently cheated. Mm -hmm. That's why I like substitutes, like... I like talking to you, and I like uh, men that I can respect, mm -hmm. doctors, and I, mm -hmm. I keep sort of maybe underneath feeling like we're real close, you know, and it's sort of like a substitute father. I don't feel that's pretending. Well, you're not really my father. No. I meant about the real close business. Well, see, I sort of feel that's pretending, too, because I can't expect you to feel very close to me. You don't know me that well. All I can do is what I am feeling, that is, I feel close to you in this moment. Mm 
In spite of feeling initially the artificiality of the situation, and particularly the hot lights, I very quickly became oblivious to the outside situation, and I think that Gloria did too. Uh, in many ways, I'm glad that she kept uh, pushing me for an answer to her very personal questions about her sex life and her relationship uh, to her daughter. I say I'm glad of this because as the relationship developed, it became, I think, completely clear to her as well as to me that she was seeking something a good deal deeper than that. Incidentally, I'd like to pay my tribute to her uh, deep honesty and being willing to talk about herself so freely. Although every individual is entirely unique, and in this respect I was definitely unprepared for and sometimes surprised by the material she brought up, still in another sense this was very typical of, of my experiences in therapy. When I'm able really to let myself enter into a relationship, and I feel that this was true in this instance, then I find myself not only being increasingly moved by being in touch with the inner world of my client, but I find myself bringing out of my own inner experience statements which seem to have no connection with what's going on, but which usually prove to be uh, or prove to have a very significant relationship to, to what the client is experiencing. I felt there were one or two incidents of this kind in this brief interview. I was genuinely moved, I probably showed it, by the fact that she told me near the end of the contact that uh, she saw me as the father she would like to have. My reply was also a thoroughly spontaneous one, that she seemed to me like a pretty nice daughter. I guess I feel that we're only playing with the real world of relationships when we talk about such an experience in terms of transference and counter-transference. Uh, I feel quite deeply about that. I, I want to say, yes, we can put this experience into some such uh, highly intellectualized framework, but when we do that, it completely misses the point of the very immediate I-thou quality of the relationship at such moments. I felt that uh, Gloria and I really encountered each other and that in some small but I believe lasting way we were each of us enriched by the experience. I'm saying these things almost immediately after the conclusion of the interview and as is characteristic of me there are not more than one or two statements or incidents which I recall from the interview. I simply know that I was very much uh, present in the relationship that I lived it in the moment of its occurrence and I realize that after a time I may begin to remember it too but at the present time I really have uh, a very non-specific memory of the whole uh, interview I'll try to look at it though a little bit more from a intellectual rather than a strictly feeling point of view Gloria showed what I've come to feel are characteristic elements of therapeutic movement. In the first part of the interview, she was talking about her feelings, and they were past feelings. She was talking about aspects of her behavior and of herself as if she didn't quite own them. She was looking outside herself for a center or locus of evaluation, some source of, of authority. She saw some of the things she was talking about in fairly black and white uh, fashion. By the end of the interview, uh, she was experiencing her feelings in the immediate moment, not only as evidenced by her tears, but by her ability to express very directly and with immediacy her feelings toward me. She was also much more aware of her ability to make her own judgments and, and choices. I guess uh, put in terms that have become somewhat commonplace, you could say that she moved from the there and then of her life to the 
here and now of elements that she was discovering in herself and feelings which she was experiencing in the moment in her relationship with me. All in all, I feel good about the interview. I guess I feel good about myself in the interview. And like Gloria, I feel very real regret that the relationship cannot continue. and quite a number of things will happen. She'll explore some of her feelings and attitudes more deeply. She's likely to discover some hidden aspects of herself that she wasn't aware of previously. Feeling herself prized by me, it's quite possible she'll come to prize herself more. Feeling that some of her meanings are understood by me, then she can more readily perhaps listen to herself, listen to what's going on within her own experience, listen to some of the meanings she hasn't been able to catch before. And perhaps if she senses a realness in me, uh, she'll be able to be a little more real within herself. I suspect there will be a change in the manner of her expression. At least this has been my experience in other instances. From being rather remote from her experiencing, remote from what's going on within her, uh, it's possible that she'll move toward more immediacy of experiencing, that uh, she will be able to sense and express what's going on in her in the immediate moment. From being disapproving of herself, it's quite possible she will move toward uh, a greater degree of acceptance of herself. From somewhat of a fear of relating, she may move toward being able to relate more directly and to encounter me more directly. From construing life in somewhat uh, rigid black and white patterns, how the privilege of seeing and feeling what really transpires. A film series like this, in which three therapists, distinguished by their different orientations, share their therapeutic endeavors has never been made before. We therefore wish to express our gratitude to Gloria, the patient, and to her therapists for allowing us to share in their therapeutic adventure. This series will be divided into three separate films. In the first film, we see Dr. Carl Rogers, founder of Client-Centered Therapy interviewing Gloria. In film number two, Dr. Frederick Pearls, founder of Gestalt Therapy, is working with her. And in film number three, Dr. Albert Ellis, founder of Rational Emotive Therapy, is our therapist. Each therapist will first describe his system of therapy briefly. He will then demonstrate his work with Gloria and then he will comment briefly on his work. Now, here's Dr. Carl Rogers. From my own years of therapeutic experience, I've come to feel that if I can create the proper climate, the proper relationship, the proper conditions, a process of therapeutic movement will almost inevitably occur in my client. Menesk, what is this climate? What, what are these conditions?
Psychotherapy is such a personal and private process that it is a mystery to most people who have never gone through it. The following series is a unique effort that allows us to sit in on what is ordinarily a very private therapeutic experience. An actual patient was courageous enough and considerate enough to allow herself to be photographed while actually engaged in therapy with three different therapists. Thus, we are likely... The process of therapy is much more likely to occur and constructive change is much more likely if I feel a real spontaneous prizing uh, of this individual with whom I'm working. A prizing of this person as a separate individual. Uh, you can call that quality acceptance, you can call it caring, uh, you can call it a non-possessive love, if you wish. I think any of those terms tend to describe it. I know that the relationship will prove more constructive if it's present. Then the third quality, will I be able to understand the inner world of this uh, individual from the, from the inside? Can I, will I be able to see it through her eyes? Will I be able to uh, be sufficiently sensitive to move around inside the world of her feelings so that I know what it feels like to be her, so that I can sense not only the surface meanings but some of the meanings that lie somewhat uh, underneath the surface. I know that if I can let myself uh, sensitively and accurately enter into her world of experience, then change and therapeutic movement are much more likely. Well, suppose I am fortunate and that I do experience some of these attitudes in the relationship. What then? Well, then a variety of things are likely to happen, both from my clinical experience and from our research investigations. We find that if uh, attitudes of the sort that I've described are presence, uh, will they exist in the interview with the woman I'm about to talk with whom I've never seen before? Well, let me try to describe very briefly what these conditions are as I see them. First of all, one question is, can I be real in the relationship? This uh, has come to have an increasing amount of importance to me over the years. I feel that... Um, Genuineness is another way of describing the quality I would like to have. Uh, I like the term congruence, by which I mean that what I'm experiencing inside is present in my awareness and comes out through my communication. In a sense, when I have this quality, I'm, I'm all in one piece in the relationship. Um, there's another word that describes it for me. I feel that in the relationship, I would like to have a transparency. I would be quite willing for my client to see all the way through me, that there would be nothing, nothing hidden. And when I'm real in this fashion that I'm trying to describe, then I know that uh, my own feelings will, will often bubble up into awareness and be expressed, but be expressed in ways that won't impose themselves uh, on my client. Then the second question I would have is, will I find myself praising this person, uh, caring for this person? I certainly don't want to pretend a caring that I don't feel. In fact, if I dislike my client persistently, I feel it's better that I should express it. But I know that the uh, 